Hello, my name is Alex. The purpose of this lab was to observe an object drop from rest falling straight down. I then analyzed this motion using the tracker software. I was then asked to use Newton's second law in order to construct a model only showing the force of gravity and construct a model showing gravity and drag force. I then compared my models to my observations by plotting all on the same graph. For my video, I filmed two of my friends dropping a football from a certain height. I set my origin in the middle of the football so that the ball will be falling in the negative y direction. I also calibrated this by measuring the height of the football, which was found to be 16 centimeters. As we play my video, notice that towards the end it gets a little blurry. This is because I was not using a high resolution camera. Even though it was blurry, I tried to find the center of mass each time to the best of my abilities. This is the code for my model with only the force of gravity. In order to do this, I set my drag force equal to a vector of zeros. I also found the mass of the ball to be 430 grams. When I hit run module, and I extend this graph, we see that the velocity is increasing exponentially. And this is true because we set the drag force equal to zero. This is the code from my model with drag force and gravity. In order to do this, I set my drag force equal to the magnitude of the ball's velocity squared, which is essentially speed. This is the only change that I made from the previous code. After I hit run module, this is a graph I found for force of drag and gravity. As you can see, the ball speeds up initially in the negative y direction, but then at a certain point no longer is accelerating. And at this point, the ball has constant velocity for the remainder of the time period. Putting my observed data and my two computational models together, this is a graph that I get. The experimental data is in red. The model of gravity alone is in green, and the model including drag is in blue. Just by looking at these graphs, we can assume that they are all correct. We can assume this because the graph with just gravity will always have a steeper slope than the graph with drag. This means that over time, the position is moving more in the negative y direction, or that the velocity is increasing. We can also assume our model with drag force actually has more drag than our actual observation. This is because we use a predicted drag force that will be higher than the actual drag. So what does this mean? By observing the different velocities, we can predict the graph of the model with drag has a terminal velocity. We can say this because the velocity of the graph is constant, meaning the net force is zero. So at this point, the drag force is equal to the gravitational force. So what if the ball had initially been thrown downward? Would the term of velocity in this case be different? In order to answer this, I went into my code with drag force and set an initial velocity of negative 10 meters per second. And when we run this, I get the graph on the right. And this graph tells us the velocity will now be decreasing instead of staying constant. So for my discussion, I will go over a few possible sources of error. First of all, the shape of my object could have affected the drag force. I was using a football, so drag force on an object that is made to be aerodynamic is probably less than that of a piece of paper. Also, I was not able to use an amazing camera, so the quality was not the best. And this could lead to a few um, differences in data. Thank you.